Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slime of Wrestling. Myself, Supreet, and this is the NXT review for December 4th, 2019. If this is your first time on the channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for all notifications. We here in Slime of Wrestling cover all pro wrestling related stuff, including reviews for Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW Dynamite, and New Japan as well. We also have a flagship podcast called the Demon and Supreet Podcast dropping every week. So this week's NXT kicked off with Moro Ronaldo who was back after a week of absence. He was doing the introduction and stuff until he was interrupted by Killian Dane who was making his way to the ring. Dane got a mic and issued an open challenge as his scheduled opponent Damian Priest was out with a rib injury that, that he suffered at war games. The challenge was accepted by Pete Dunn. On to the match, Pete Dunn took the fight to Killian Dane, rushing through the ropes and hammering Dane with punches. He quickly moved for a submission but Dane escaped. Dunn started working on Dane's fingers or like Moro calls it, bending the digits. Dunn bounced off the mat following a wicked running forearm strike to the upper body, allowing Dane to trap in a rare chin lock. Dunn tried to break it by going after his fingers again and managed to escape the hold and set up Dane in the corner for a running in Zugiri. Dunn avoided a pump kick and planted Dane with a German suplex. Dane kicked out at 2. Dane avoided a moonsault on the outside as Dunn landed on his bad leg. As Dunn was favoring his leg, Dane got back in the ring and bounced off the ropes for a massive suicide dive. Back inside, Dane was working on the injured left knee of Dunn. Dunn made a big comeback after catching Dane on the top rope and tried to snap his fingers. Dane blocked it. Dunn instead went for a big superplex from the top. Dunn followed it up with a rope assisted tornado DDT which only got a 2. On the outside Dunn finally hit his apron moonsault. Dane recovered quickly and planted him on the apron with a wasteland followed by a running senton. Dane followed that up with a running cannonball into the steel steps. Back inside, Dunn countered a Vader bomb, trapping Dane in a triangle choke. He moved towards the fingers but Dane shook him off, planting him with a sit-out power bomb. Dane tried to move up for a Vader bomb again, only for Dunn to jump on his back with a sleeper hold. Dane countered it as he fell off the top rope, crushing Dunn in the process. Dane was on top of Dunn, referee made the 1-2-3 which resulted in Killian Dane winning the match. Decent match here, it's worth the note that Pete Dunne is not being booked that strong like he was in NXT UK. I still think he's gonna return to NXT UK to win back the United Kingdom title from Walter. We will have to wait and see. Dakota Kai was interviewed backstage about her upcoming match with Rhea Ripley. Kai said that she has already taken out Mia Yam, Tegan Knox, and left Candice LeRae hurt and tonight she will take out Ripley as well. The Undisputed Era came out next with no Bobby Fish. Kyle O'Reilly represented his tag team partner by wearing one of the NXT tag team titles and playing the other as an air guitar as only O'Reilly can. Adam Cole said that 2019 has been their year and they had a November to remember. However, the Undisputed Prophecy has only just begun. They said that they had some unfinished business. Cole was referencing Keith Lee and Finn Balor here. Cole called out Finn Balor, but out comes Keith Lee instead, who decided to answer the call. Crowd was all over Keith Lee singing, Oh, bask in his glory. O'Reilly took a dig at Lee, calling him Keith Momentary Lee before running down his failures over the past few weeks. Lee responded by calling himself a game changer and he managed to turn the NXT champion into one of the most viral gifts on the internet today. Not only that, but he was also successful at war games, knocking off the Undisputed Era with Tommaso Ciampa, Dominic Dijakovic and Kevin Owens. He then began eyeing every championship the Undisputed Era were holding. This forced the Era to jump on him. Lee handled them all with ease, sending Cole, O'Reilly and Strong packing. Champa appeared behind Cole and sent him back inside for a spirit bomb but was saved by O'Reilly and Strong. 
Dera fled the scene as Champa and Lee stood victorious in the ring. Especially Champa who was staring at Goldie. Zaya Lee cut a promo on Shayna Baszler stating that she was going to silence the NXT Women's Champion and prove herself as a warrior. We got a great video package for Kushida who was out with a fractured wrist. They showed him having a great time with his family. He said that he's here in the States to, to give a better life to his family. They then announced that he's gonna be returning to action tonight. Zayali was a Shayna Baszler. Zayali managed to sweep Shayna Baszler's legs, leading to a ground and pound trade between the two. Baszler had trouble locking in the Kirofuda clutch. Lee rocked the champ with a spinning roundhouse kick. But as she moved towards the ropes, Baszler hung her arms up. Back in the middle, Baszler was going for a joint manipulation, leaving Lee writhing in pain. Lee shook off a submission hold and rocked Baszler with a straight kick to the chest. A fast striking combination lit up Baszler, but she managed to get her hands on Lee, bringing her up top for a super gut wrench. Lee countered and planted Baszler with a power bomb. Baszler kicked out and avoided a tornado kick. Baszler locked in the Kirofido clutch to get the quick victory here. Cassius Ono was seen back in NXT. He was here to bring the crowd a preview of what's to come at the upcoming World's Collide event in January, which is NXT vs NXT UK. Facing Leon Ruff and Adrian Alanis, Wesley Blake chopped Ruff repeatedly and rocked him with a lariat, with a lariat to the back of the neck. Steve Cutler came in and buckle bombed Ruff in his corner. Alanis tagged in but was quickly handled with a flying knee from Cutler. Final parts of the match saw a reverse DDT diving stop combination which got the Forgotten Sons the win here. Post-match Jackson Riker chokes Lamb Ruff on the apron which looked brutal by the way. And that was it. As of now the Forgotten Sons are the only legit tag team in NXT that can go after the tag team titles. But looking at it, I think it's not gonna be happening this soon. So moving on. Rhea Ripley vs Dakota Kai was next. Kai came out and a title run showed the attack on Tegan Nox from War Games. She once again came out with Nox's knee brace. Rhea Ripley wasn't too faced by the situation. She got a mic. Ripley said that Kai was a clever girl for how she set up Ripley's team at War Games. However, one of the best things about setups when I get to turn the tables. Me, I am's music it. Yim came out to get some much needed revenge on Kai. A running kick in the corner left Kai crumbling to the outside. Ripley tossed her back in as she wasn't getting away from her punishment that easy. Yim batted Kai around ringside, withstanding a face wash near the ring post to bounce her off the barricade repeatedly. Both women started brawling to the back. Shayna Baszler and her horsewoman rushed Rhea Ripley. Ripley fought all three women, even breaking Baszler's grasp twice. However, with Marina Shafir and Jessamyn Duke pulling her arms against the ropes, Baszler locked in the Kirofuda clutch yet again, finally leaving Ripley out cold. Baszler got a mic and started mocking Ripley. She then revealed that after all this time, Ripley would finally be getting the NXT Women's title match on December 18th edition of NXT. I think Baszler drops the title on the 18th because if you look at it, Rhea Ripley winning the title in full sale would be bigger than winning at a takeover. So that's my take. We get a video package for Isaiah Swerve Scott. Next up we had Cassius Sono coming out for an open challenge which was answered by Matt Riddle. Riddle and Ono traded holds early on but Ono got the better of the exchange. Riddle responded with his brute strength, picking up for a mad slam. A huge German suplex sent Ono crashing on his head. A series of kicks in the corner set up for a running forearm. Ono avoided the second one, rolling to the outside instead. Riddle leaped over the ropes and landed on the apron, setting up for a nasty penalty kick on Ono as we cut to commercial. Back from commercial, Ono was on the receiving end of the bro kicks. Ono blocked the final kick. He chopped Riddle's throat. Sending Riddle down to the mat. Ono trapped Riddle in a three-quarter Nelson hold. Riddle tried to break it but was trapped for a modified wing clipper. 
Riddle kicked out at two. Riddle escaped another hold and met Ono with a Broton. Riddle tried for a penalty kick but missed. Riddle hit the bro to sleep instead, followed by the power bomb and the final flash knee. Riddle went to the top to hit the floating bro. Ono kicked out at two. Ono set up Riddle for the gotch neutralizer. Riddle escaped, hit the ripcord knee strike, followed by the bro derrick to finish off Ono and get the win. We were supposed to get Kushida vs Roll Mendoza, but that didn't happen as Mendoza was taken out by Cameron Grimes, who hit the K win on Mendoza near the entrance way. Grimes volunteered himself to face Kushida, and the match was made official. Grimes hit an early handspring kick to the face, sending him to the outside. He followed it up with a rolling centon off the top. Back inside, Kushida lit up Grimes with some stiff chops to the chest. Kushida blocked a kick and tried to lock in the October stretch. Grimes escaped the hold again, but the third time was the charm trapping him in the middle of the ring. Grimes managed to get the ropes, breaking the hold in the process. Kushida bounced off the ropes for a handspring back elbow, but he was caught with a German suplex, finally giving Grimes his first big offensive move. Grimes went for a Okano roll, Kushida countered it and went for a roll-up pin, which got him the big. They announced for next week that Leo Rush will be defending his Cruiserweight Championship against Angel Garza, and Mia Yim will be facing Dakota Kai. I pick Garza to beat Rush for the Cruiserweight title next week, because main event time, the Undisputed Era vs Tommaso Ciampa, Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic. Roderick Strong had a rough start as Team Ciampa tore him apart. However, when Dijakovic entered, Strong chopped him down with a shot to the knee. Kyle O'Reilly came in, but he was launched across the ring with a release suplex. Dijakovic went for a pendulum backbreaker and a middle rope splash which gave him a two count. Strong came back in, but he too was getting manhandled by Dijakovic. Strong and O'Reilly was able to finally chop him down. They were working on Dijakovic in their corner. Dijakovic was trapped in an abdominal stretch. He shoved Strong into the corner, forcing all three members of the era jumped in to drag Dijakovic back to their corner. O'Reilly knocked Keith Lee off the apron, but missed Champa. Dijakovic came in with a big boot on O'Reilly and made the tag to Champa. Champa sent Cole and Strong to the floor and hit O'Reilly with a belly to belly suplex. Cole tried to jump in, but he was spiked with a dripping DDT. Champa hit the Project Champa on O'Reilly for a near fall. Champa was looking for the air raid crash. Strong came in for the save. Strong and O'Reilly hit the high-low combination and went for the pin but was broken up by Dijakovic. Strong planted Champa with a fireman's carry gutbuster while Champa responded with a clothesline. Champa made the tag to Keith Lee who took out Cole with a big clothesline. Cole escaped to the outside thanks to O'Reilly and Strong. Lee was going for a tope on Halo but the era had it scouted. Dijakovic took out the era with a big springboard move. Final parts of the match saw Dijakovic and O'Reilly while Cole and Champa were fighting in the middle of the ring. Out of nowhere came Finn Balor who rushed in, sending Cole into the ref who knocked Dijakovic and O'Reilly off the corner. Balor hit the 1916 on Champa. Balor had his sights on Cole next. But from the back comes Keith Lee who was like a Loch Ness monster coming from the sea. Lee and Balor were fighting it out. Balor was looking for the sling blade but Lee countered it and hit a spirit bomb. Cole came in, hit a super kick on Lee and tried to follow it up with the last shot. But Lee quickly got up and hit the fireman's carry jackhammer to get the victory and pin the NXT champion in the process. Post-match William Regal came out to announce that next week there will be a NXT championship number one contender triple threat match featuring Finn Balor, Tommaso Ciampa and Keith Lee. And the winner will face Adam Cole on the December 18th edition of NXT. I pick Keith Lee to win that triple threat and go on to face Adam Cole on the December 18th edition of NXT. I'm not saying that Keith Lee will beat Cole for the title, but Cole versus Lee take my money. So that was NXT. Overall, it was a okay show. I think next week's NXT will be even better with the cruiserweight title match and the triple threat match. So what did you guys think about this week's NXT? Let me know in the comment section below or on social media. You can find Slam Up Wrestling, Twitter at Slam Up W, Instagram at Slam Up Wrestling. 
Our podcast and reviews are mainly audio based and if you don't want your YouTube app running for that, then you can catch Slime Up Wrestling on Spotify and Anchor as well. And if you are watching on YouTube, then make sure to like this video. The like goals for this video are 10 likes, so make sure you do that. And we will see you guys next time.